Happy Resurrection morning, everybody. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, death has been defeated. Christ has risen from the tomb. He's risen from the dead and, and, uh, and has brought the salvation to us that, uh, that was in so much need. And I'm looking at the book of Matthew this morning, chapter 28. And it says, After the Sabbath, as the first uh, day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning and his robe was white as snow. The guards were shaken from fear, uh, from fear of him that they became like dead men. But the angel told the women, don't be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here for he has been resurrected just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples he has been raised from the dead. In fact, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen to what I have told you. The resurrection. This is something that uh, most people know about. This is the center point of what Easter is all about. It is the new life. Um, it is uh, the ability for us to have a reestablished relationship with God. But I want you to understand something also that that this is not just something that Jesus did just to show off. This is not just something that uh, was done for him. Um, many people may walk it out and say, yeah, well, there's this one guy in history that did it, but it doesn't apply to me. But I want you to take a look at something else. And it's a, a little secret that tends to be kind of tucked away in the book of Matthew. And uh, and it's it really has no place uh, in the middle of the paragraph where it's sitting. But going back to Matthew chapter 27, where it's talking about the death of Jesus. And it's interesting. Uh, verse number 50 says, Jesus shouted again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And suddenly the curtain of the sanctuary was split in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. Verse 52, listen to this. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had gone to their rest were raised. And they came out of the tombs after his resurrection, entered the holy city, and appeared to many. And what I'm telling you this morning is that this resurrection, this new life, is something that was done for all. It is something that, that is available to each and every one of us. We all know the scripture, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth uh, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And what does it mean to believe? Because this is this is the key. This is what it's all about right here. Okay, uh, it means believing in Him means having a relationship with Christ. It means trusting in Him. Uh, it means uh, putting your all, all of your faith into Him, all of your trust. Um, it, it means living your life in, in, in pursuit of God's will. And uh, and this is uh, this is in essence what it means to be a Christian. So, how do you become one? How do you take up this free gift um, uh, of salvation? Probably one of the most simple explanations is the ABCs. Um, a, admit that you're a sinner in, in, in need of salvation. See, so we've all messed up. Uh, we've all committed uh, a sin. The, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. It only takes one sin to mess up the relationship between you and God. And so that one little lie that I told when I was four years old, uh, that little fire truck shaped eraser that I stole back in elementary school, you know, these are sins. I've, I've committed theft. If you, most everybody knows the Ten Commandments, don't steal, don't murder, so, you know, and so forth. It's really easy to break those. And so just that one sin that I did separated me from God. I, and, uh, and, 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 and it took away my ability uh, to have salvation. And so um, well, it took away my ability to have a relationship with my Creator. Separation. Uh, that is the worst hell a person can go through is separation from their Creator. And so uh, that one sin did it. And by admitting that, in essence, I'm a thief, then I'm in need of salvation. All right? B believe this is very important because believe means that that uh, that I'm willing to put my trust in what Christ did that I'm willing to put my trust in in uh, his direction for my life uh, it means that I'm 
I'm willing to step into the unknown. That I'm willing to step outside of my comfort zone to follow His will. See, His will may not be what your will is. I've heard it said before, you want to know the key to true happiness is to find uh, His will and live in His will. And so, belief. It's more than just saying, I believe that Jesus was a man. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. When you say, I believe, it means that I'm going to put my faith, my life in His hands. Every time I get onto an airplane to fly somewhere, I'm having to sit there in belief that those pilots are sober and able to fly that airplane and get me safely to where I'm going. That's belief. And then C, confession. Confess him to others. You know, testify. You know, you've made this decision. You say, you know what? I, I've, I've, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of, of salvation. And I have put my life in Jesus. I have, I have, uh, I have put my belief in him. And, and I'm going to live in Him, but you know what? I'm going to tell others about Him. I'm going to share Him with others. Then I'm going to share what He does for me. I'm going to share what He has done for my life. And I'm going to tell Him why I live in joy. I'm going to tell them why I live in joy in Him every day. So, A, admit. B, believe. C, confess. If this is something that you haven't done, this is one of the most, well, there's no one of, this is the most important decision you could ever make in your life. You see, life does not end. There is an eternity. Uh, where you are right now is just a speck on an endless timeline. So after your days of walking this earth are over with, um, you know, life will still go on for you. Your decision is going to be where you spend it. Are you going to spend an eternity separated from God? Are you going to uh, spend eternity being being separated and and uh, and living in the hell of separation and living in the in the hell of paying the consequences for the sins that you've done and your choice not to take the salvations offered to you? Or are you going to spend eternity? With him, are you going to spend eternity in paradise with the King of Kings, with Christ Jesus, who defeated death, who literally was was killed on a physical and spiritual level, and came back to life on Easter Sunday? See, that's my King, and that's where I want to spend eternity. And if this is something that you can't answer for yourself, that I, I, I haven't made that decision, and uh, I don't know where where to go, you can reach out to me. Um, you can uh, uh, find a pastor, but this says, you know, take care of this. This is the most, most important decision you'll ever make in your life. In the days after his resurrection, believers acknowledged each other by this one thing, and it's this thing that, uh, uh, this saying that, that help, you know, that you identify um, each other by as they would meet on the street. And one will look at the other and say, He is risen. And the other would say, He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Y'all have a blessed Easter Sunday. My king was born king. The Bible says he's a seven-way king. He's a king of the Jews. That's a racial king. He's a king of Israel. That's a national king. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he is a lord of lords. Now that's my king. Well, I wonder if you know him. Do you know him? Don't try to mislead me. Do you know my king? David said the heavens declare the glory of God. And the fundament showed his handiwork. My king is the only one whom there's no means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his solar supply. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessing. Well, well, he's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. And he's impartially merciful. That's my king. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. 
He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's august. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. Well, he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in high criticism. He's a fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. And that's my king. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. Well, he, he's the only one able to supply all of our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He star God and he dies. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? Well, my king is a key of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. He's a master of the mighty. He's a captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings. And he's the lord of lords. That's my king. Yeah. 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 That's my king. My king. Yeah. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he, he's indescribable. He's indescribable. Yes. Yeah. He, he's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. I'm trying to tell you, the heavens of heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man explaining him. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, Pharisees couldn't stand him. But they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Yeah! He always has been. And he always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessor. And he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him, and there'll be nobody after him. You can't him, teach him, and he's not going to resign. That's my king. Thank you, Lord. That's my king. Time, time is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Hey! All the power belongs to my king. We around here talking about black power and white power and green power. But it's God's power. Thine is the power. Yeah. And the glory. We trying to get prestige and honor and glory for ourselves. But the glory is all his. Yes. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever how long is that and ever and ever and ever and ever and when you get through with all of the forever 
ולאמן.